Okay, so you've seen the basic slide operation and the basic creation of individual presentations and the slides they're in. Now we're actually going to create a special slide. Uh, this is going to this exercise is going to show you all the advanced capabilities of ProPresenter with regards to slide objects and putting multiple objects on the screen. So to start with, I'm going to create a new presentation by clicking on my new presentation uh, button, and that's going to create a new presentation. By default, it's going to be titled Untitled. And this we're actually going to say Pre-Service Announcements. That's going to be the title of my presentation. Um, and again, it's using the template that I originally chose. So I'm actually going to go in and edit this slide, and I'm going to just get rid of everything that's on there. Um, to start with, for our, our pre-service announcements, uh, the first announcement that I want to create is a, um, a general announcement to turn off your cell phone. So to do that, I'm going to first choose a video background, and I can uh, let's do something high-tech since we're actually going to be talking about cell phones, and that's kind of a high-tech device. So I've added a video background cue again by holding down the command key and dragging a video background to my slide. And now I'm going to add a graphic. And this graphic is going to be a cell phone. It just so happens I have one here. <clears throat> and you can import any kind of graphic file that the Mac can read, whether it be a PDF, a JPEG, a PNG file, a TIFF file. Uh, PNG files are nice because you can actually specify a mask area. So this, is, this PNG file has some transparency to it. Um, and so this is the cell phone, uh, just a generic cell phone image that I was able to pull off of the internet. And I can uh, resize this graphic. I can also affect how it's, uh, it's displayed by clicking over here in the inspector. I can change it from scale to fit to scale to fill or stretch to fill or do a custom fit. If I wanted to, I can uh, do a custom fit and change the X and Y coordinates or the scale of this particular graphic. But for this purpose, I'm actually just going to do a scale to fit. So it actually fits within the bounding box that is specified uh, that I see here. Um, you can grow or shrink this um, by using the handles that appear in the bounding box. So now I have my picture of the cell phone. Uh, I want to do my announcement. And uh, to make the announcement stand out, I'm going to create a rectangle. And by default, this is white. But I'm going to put my announcement over here. So I'm going to grow this rectangle to, uh, we'll say about that size. And then again, using the inspector, I'll click on the slide object inspector. And here are the different properties for this particular slide object. So I can fine tune the X and Y coordinates or the width and height of this object. Uh, and I'm going to actually change the fill color from being white uh, to, we'll do a shade of blue. Be a darker shade of blue. That's nice. And I'll change the opacity to be slightly opaque. So maybe 60%. That looks good. And then uh, I'm actually going to add a corner radius to this box. So we'll do, say, 30 points. And what you see that that does um, by getting off of that, you'll see that it actually has added a nice little round rectangle or a rounded edge to the corners of my rectangle. And if I want to, I can add a shadow. So I'll go ahead and do that because that's nice. And instead of a shadow, by choosing a brighter color, I can actually make it sort of a glow. And I'll change the radius on this to, say, 10 points. So it just kind of uh, highlights it that way. I'm kind of doing a, a fairly gaudy uh, look to this just to um, show, you, show off the features of how ProPresenter works. So there is my box that is sitting on top of, uh, of all the other elements that are going on here. Now I actually want to do the announcement, which is uh, going to be in text. So I'll create a text box, and I will fill that same box. I'll set the bounding rect for this, uh, for this text box to basically be the same size as the rectangle that I've already created. And then I can go into my text inspector properties. And for this text, I'll want it to actually be centered on this particular box. And I'll choose, I'll just choose Helvetica, that's fine. And I'll make it bold, and I will say, please turn off your cell phones. OK, so that looks pretty good. Um, I also have the ability to add a shadow to this particular text box. So I'll go into the 
object properties and add the shadow just like I did for my rectangle. But in this case, I'm actually going to make it black. That's a hard edge on that. So I'm actually going to change the radius. And uh, this is just the blur radius that we're setting here. So I'll do that at, say, 5. Eh, let's make it 10. So you see it has a nice drop shadow to that text. It really makes it stand out. So very quickly here, I've created a, a simple slide to remind um, anybody that's in the audience to turn off their cell phones. And I can hit the Show button if I want to preview that and see what that looks like to my audience. It's going to make it live. and this is what we got. So you see that the transparency of this video or of this uh, rectangle allows me to see the background underneath and uh, the mask of the PNG is also showing that. So we've made a very, very nice looking slide very, very quickly. <clears throat> if I create a new slide, um, let's say we're going to create a slide that's going to be to remind people to um, reset their clocks for, for the spring. So. I'll add a cloud background for this. And uh, since this is the springtime, I'm actually going to choose another graphic. And I have a sunflower. That's kind of cheery. And again, I will, for this one, I won't actually do the, uh, the box like I had before. I'll just create a text box and say, remember to turn your clocks um, back. I'm sorry, forward. We're going to spring forward, fall back. <laughs> so I'll set the size for this to 60 points, and I'll say, please remember to set your clocks forward. Whoops. One hour next Sunday. OK, so that's nice. And I'll grow this box to fill that text. So that looks nice, very, very simple. And so I have two different announcement slides. And let me just click on that to preview it. And that's what it looks like. And since these are announcement slides, I'll want these to run one after the other. Um, so what we can actually do is if I click on the Format button, we have an option here called the Timer. And this is actually going to create a little slideshow for us. And I want each of these slides to be active for, uh, in this case, I'll just say five seconds. When I choose that, you can see it's added this little 5 to uh, each of these slides. And then for the second slide, it's indicate this little graphic indicates that it's going to loop back to the first slide. So when I start this little presentation, I'll just go ahead and preview it full screen. It's going to be on this slide for 5 seconds, and then it'll automatically advance to the next slide. And it'll be on this slide for 5 seconds, and then when it's finished, it'll go back to the first slide. So I can have all kinds of different announcement slides in my presentation. And this is, again, just all pre-service announcements. And the great thing is that I can be making edits to these uh, while individual slides are, are live. Um, you can also add individual videos. So if I have a, a countdown video um, that I want to add into this presentation, I just so happen to have one. So I'm actually going to go into my foregrounds area, and I'm going to add it as a foreground video. Um, one of our partners uh, that's allowed us to use some of their um, footage is Worship Films, and they have this great trivia challenge video. So I'm actually just going to add this video, again, by dragging it, uh, holding down the Command key, and dragging it up into my presentation. This is going to create a foreground video slide, as indicated by this graphic. So <clears throat> I'm going to redo my timer so that everything is five seconds again. And now, when it gets to the end of this sunflower, or uh, the clock forward video, or slide, it's going to go into this New Testament trivia video. And this is going to run through, um, in this case, this is a, a rather long video. <clears throat> and because this is running as a foreground video, um, it should pay no attention to the timer. <laughs> but that's a bug, actually, in this uh, in this version. Generally, foreground videos, whenever they're playing, if they're as part of a slideshow, um, the the timer doesn't indicate the amount of time that, that background or that that video is going to be live. It indicates the amount of time at the end of the video before it loops back to the uh, to the first slide. So anyway, this is an easy way to create some pre-service um, slides 
very quickly and easily to uh, get um, those announcements out of the way prior to the service.